for the sake of wilaya. What is wilaya? A concept that is not even mentioned in the Quran. So welcome to the Bayt al Ghadir channel. Now today's show actually um, it's a slight difference because we normally um, deal with a video of uh, Brother Haji and thereafter compute it. With this show, we are actually going to, it's going to be very much top heavy on references. Reason being because there's a concept that Haji has a um, considerable amount of indigestion over uh, the Vilayat of Ali, basically, Alay Salam. Um, uh, he's had a kind of a theme uh, with a lot of his videos where he kept on mocking this concept. He kept saying, Vilayat, Vilayat. Like, um, almost like jokingly, maybe a joke concept that she has uh, ascribed to a belief in the Avalayat of Amid al-Mumaneen alayhi salatu wasalam. So basically a lot of the materials you've read out were all focused on the narratives where the Avalayat of Ali was mentioned. He would read it and mock it. So really the question today is, it's really twofold. Number one, um, is the doctrine of the light of Ali alayhi salatu wasalam alien to Islam? Point number one, question number one, I should say. And number two, if it isn't, is it only the exclusive domain of Shia Muslims? Or do other Muslims from other sects also ascribe or to the same few points? And we say it's not necessary, obviously, the other people are spinning to never a number of different groupings, but are we to simply assume that this is a distinct viewpoint of the Shia, or should can we actually see um segments within our Alasuna Wal Jamal brothers ascribing likewise. As you know, in this series we are working collectively, Alhamdulillah, as is the objective of this channel, we are working with a brother from Alasuna Wal Jamal. Brother Brother Abu Hassan is from Alasuna Wal Jamal. He is the one who came through it and requested we do this series. Because of Brother Abu Hassan is here, um I, and obviously we'll be trying to set our position of both schools of thought. When it comes to the Vilayat of Amir al-Mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib the Shia position, we believe that Vilayat uh, means authority and mastership. And, it, and there's two types of Vilayat. It's spiritual and it's physical, practical. And we believe that both of those are encompassed as a collective in Amir al-Mumineen Ali ibn Abi Talib and thereafter um, it is also inherited amongst the, the 12 Imams of al Bayt so when we talk about, as Shia Muslims, the doctrine of authority, Valaya, we believe that it's all-encompassing. So it means spiritual and physical um, heads of state. And obviously, um, Brother Abbas will talk about the al Sunnah concept, um, for, for, um, inshallah, when he comes to his part. But obviously, there's a difference here, but that, inshallah, when he discusses that, what, um, he'll uh, kind of go through it. Actually, Brother, why, why not? Why don't you, uh, brother, just tell us a little bit about the Sunni understanding of varieties rather than going into the text first? What, how would you explain varieties from a Sunni perspective, bro? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam muhammad wa ala ahli bayti al-tahibin al-tahirin wa radiyallahu anas sahabi al-muttaqeen amma ba'd. So definitely I would agree that there is a concept of wilaya in ahli sunnah wal jama'ah Whereas we might, not all of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah would say agree with the Shia perspective of the Wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen. But there is definitely that understanding of Wilaya and mastership and leadership in Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Um, so we have, for example, the Wilaya, someone being a Wali of Allah. He has Karamat, he has Kashif, he, has, he can even do miracles, for example. Um, so we have, do have this understanding. And just to let you know as well, some of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah actually do accept the Shia understanding of Wilaya. I accept that this is not a majority. However, some of them did accept it. And there is difference of opinion within Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah as well about this issue. Now, you know, when we discuss Wilaya, obviously Wilaya itself is such a vast subject. And we can be here for days continuously speaking about this subject. Um, but I think it's important to stress that when we discuss Wulai itself, uh, we do so based on uh, several verses of the Holy Quran. Um, and amongst the most common verses we can cite is the famous verse, uh, Surah 555, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your uh, wali is none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. 
and those who believe and establish prayer and give zakat while they bow down. Um, another verse uh, which is often cited uh, by Shias, followers of Ahlul Bayt is verse 449, and that is, O you who believe, obey Allah, his messenger, uh, and his messenger, and those in authority amongst you. So the first aspect of walaya is that we must obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means that we must recognize recognize who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and that we must accept that he is the only one to be uh, worshipped. So, you know, we need to we need to have knowledge of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a must and is something uh, very important. The next aspect obviously goes on to who should we obey after that? Who should we uh, obey after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And of course, as the verse indicates, it says we must obey uh, his messenger, which is the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him. So both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger have this uh, uh, aspect of walaya over all of us, okay? And this is clear from the holy verse of the, uh, the holy verse of the Holy Quran. Another verse that comes in mind, I believe, is in Surah Al-Azab, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, it's not for a believer that a man or woman, when, they, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger have decreed a matter, that they should have an option for that decision. So this kind of connects to the previous verse laid around obedience, that when something has been decided for... Uh, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, that is the final say. There is no, you know, this total obedience uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Now, the last aspect of obviously a walaya comes related to um, when it, the verse mentions, as I, I, as I previously, mentioned, previously mentioned about those who give charity while they bow down. Obviously, we say that this was revealed uh, about Midul Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam. I know there was a statement made by some ignorant individual who said, oh, all these traditions about, you know, Imam Ali alayhi salam giving a charity whilst he was in the state of uh, prayer because this is what the scholars the famous mufassas have confirmed that this particular part of this verse was revealed about imam Ali islam i believe alama taftazani actually said the famous opinion agreed upon is that this was revealed about amir al but nowadays you know you have these people who have this hatred towards al bayt al islam and they will try to deny this nevertheless the verse mentioned the last aspect which is that we must um uh, you know, uh, uh, we, you know, the, the the wali is the one who gives uh, charity whilst he's in the state of praying. Who is the middle mu'minin Ali alayhi salam? Now, if we connect that to the verse which I mentioned before, and the last aspect, which is that you know we must obey those in uh, in authority, uh, we say that this refers to the imams of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. I think I briefly touched on uh, touched on this in the previous show as well. That you know, when it comes to the ulil amr. Uh, those in uh, those in authority, the Sunnis themselves, um, you know, they differ on in terms of who they are. So, you know, a Muslim generally, uh, you know, they cannot be a true Muslim uh, and, uh, until they completely, you know, uh, you know, believe and accept these verses of the Holy Quran without doubt. Um, and likewise, when I say uh, uh, linked to obedience, also comes into the aspect of mawadda, love. So, in very short, I would say that. You know, when it comes to the topic of walaya, it can be, you know, briefly understood in number one, recognition, number two, obedience, and number three, love. That's all I wanted to say. That's clear. I think, uh, are we in a position, are we, let, let's talk about the texts themselves? Yeah, sure. So uh, what we're going to do now, inshallah, ta'ala, is we're going to present what the, the Sunni scholars have said about walaya. So now, inshallah, you'll see on my screen, um, as, as always, a document which we'll present to the viewers. We can always go back and have a read uh, for, for themselves, uh, and we have provided the scans. A famous book called Friends of Allah and the Friends of Shaitan. On page number five, he states the following. The word for the allies of Allah, the awliya, singular, wali, comes from the root word walaya. Walaya is the opposite of enmity. The basic meaning of walaya is love and closeness, while the basic meaning of, of is hatred and distance. Uh, distance. And it's also been said that the wali of Allah has been called this because of his con consistency in obedience to Allah. But the first analysis is more correct. The wali, therefore, is the one who is close. It is said the one, yali, uh, the verb from the root word, that one, i.e., is close to him. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, do not, take the, uh, do not take my enemy as your enemy, as allies, awliya, towards whom you secretly cast your love. Thus, whoever bears an amity towards the allies of Allah bears an amity towards Allah, and whoever bears an amity towards Allah is at war with Allah. This is why the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, said in another version of the hadith about the allies of Allah, 
Whoever bears enmity towards an ally of mine has hatred into warfare with me. It's interesting, though, because when it comes to this particular uh, statement, uh, nowadays these, you notice that the tendency with the Nawasid is that there's a famous hadith where the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, says that, you know, uh, whoever is war with Ali alayhi salam is in war, war with me. And whoever is war with me is in war with Allah. I've actually seen uh, people uh, who actually try to claim that this particular report is fabricated and it's weak. Yet here you have one of the heads of the, the Salafi ideology who actually confirms this uh, with very explicit statements just in these last segments which I've read. So this is from uh, Friends of Allah, Friends of Shaitan, page number five. And this is the English print of the book, which is also available online, in PDF. And it's also available to purchase. And as you can see, the passage is there for the viewers to always go back and have a read. Okay, so let's go to another part of the book, page number 17. Since the allies of Allah are the pious, i.e. having taqwa, believers, Quran, Surah number 10, 62 to 64, it's clear that the degree of one's closeness to Allah is according to the degree of his faith, iman, and his piety. Thus, whoever is greater in faith and piety is greater in closeness of his relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So people are of different degrees of closeness to Allah in accordance to the, deg uh, the differences in the degree of the iman and the taqwa. So now here, he says that when it comes to the awliya, uh, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in order to, um, the relationship that they have between God is based on the level of uh, faith and taqwa. This is page number 17. There's a scan for the viewers to go back and have a read. Okay, now we're going to come to another part. Friends of Allah, again, from the same book, Friends of Allah and the Friends of Shaitan, page number 28. Since the allies of Allah are the pious believers and the people are of various degree in faith and pious practice, taqwa, it is clear that the people are also of varying degrees of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in accordance to the degree of faith and pious practice. In the same way, just as they are uh, of varying, uh, varying degrees of disbelief and hypocrisy, and they are also varying, varying degrees of distance from the enmity, enmity of Allah in accordance with that. So something very similar to what I mentioned before. And this is on page number 28 for the viewers to go back and look at. So that deals with what the scholars have said in terms of um, what is a walaya and who is a wali and, and how close and what constitutes um, them in their relationship and uh, the, the uh, the relationship that they have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what differs them from other people. Uh, Brother Abul Hassan, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. In fact, Ibn Mandur says, Mawla is a guardian who has authority over people. And that's obviously the linguistic meaning in Lisan al Mizan, volume 6, page 4920 to 4921. If we just keep scrolling down, Raghab al-Asfahani, he says, there is no difference between the wilaya and walaya in terms of meaning. The real meaning is guardian or to have authority over something. The word wali and mawla are used in having authority over something. That is in Mufradat al-Fadl al-Quran, volume 2, page 269 to 271. Al-Fadl al-Quran, yeah. Also, Ibn al-Athir al-Jazari, he says, whoever have authority over something, then he is the mawla or his wali. And that is an nahaya fi gharib al-hadith wal-athar, volume 5, page 228. As we can see, his three scholars clearly stating that the word mawla or wali means to have authority over something or master or along the lines of the word authority. Now we're going to come to whether or not this term mawla and wali has been applied uh, in hadith. Uh, because as we as Shia, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt al-Islam, um, we take the Sunni definition of wali and mawla to mean exactly how Abul Hassan described it earlier, which is that it means, uh, can you just repeat one more time, Abul Hassan, just so the viewers can hear this? So anyone who is... A mawla or a wali means they have authority over something. So like a guardian or like author someone in authority is someone who is called a mawla or a wali. Excellent, excellent. I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted 
you to say this so that I've not been accused of anything. And this is exactly what you have read in the, um, in the text which you presented earlier. So now here comes the hadith. So the first hadith is the famous hadith of uh, Hadith al -Gadir. And by the way, there's many hadith we can present, but these are the these are ones which I personally chose myself because I found them to be the most relevant uh, where the term wali and mawla has been used. So the first tradition is from Al-Badaya wa Nahaya, volume 7, page number 668. And Ibn Kathir says in the, in the footnotes that our Sheikh al Zahabi has said this narration is Sahih. So this is an authentic tradition. Um, it's a well-known incident and it, it took place during the last farewell Hajj of the Holy Prophet. In fact, this tradition is, is mass transmitted and it's probably one of those... Um, uh, only incidences uh, during the time of the Holy Prophet, and uh, Abu Hassan can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been mass, it's, it's probably the most reported incident during the time of the Holy Prophet because it's been narrated by so many yes. companions. Uh, so this hadith uh, goes as follows uh, Zed ibn Arkham, uh, who said, While returning from Hajjat uh, al Wada, the Messenger of Allah, may peace and blessings be upon him and his family, stopped in a place called Gadir al Khum and ordered the Muslims to stop there. The Messenger of Allah gave a sermon and again repeated that he's going to leave two things among the Ummah. The Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Ahlul Bayt. The Book of Allah, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Ahlul Bayt, his progeny. No Quran and Sunnah there. Sorry, Abul Hassan. I had to uh, point that out there. He goes, I'll leave you two things. The Quran and Ahlul Bayt and his book, and meaning his progeny. Then he said, Allah is my Mawla. Holy Prophet said, Allah is my Mawla. So here I've got the word master, okay, master. And I'm the master, the mola of every believer. Then he, then he held the hand of Ali alayhi salam and said, whomever I am his mola, master, then Ali is his mola, master. Okay, so Abu Tafal said, I asked Zed, did you hear it from the messenger of Allah? He said there, are, there was none who was around the pulpit except he saw this with his eyes and he heard this with his ears. So this is Abu Tafal asking Zed, Zed ibn Arkham. The next report where the term Mola and Wali has been used is uh, from the famous book Al Sunan by Ibn Abi Asim, volume 2, page number 799 to 800. And the hadith states as follows this is a, during a different occasion where the Holy Prophet said this particular uh, narration. The Messenger of Allah, with peace and blessings be upon him, said, Ali is for me and I am from Ali. And he is the Wali, the master of every believer after me. And in the footnotes, the tradition has been graded Sahih by the condition of uh, Imam Muslim, Muslim ibn, ibn Hajjaj. And there's another tradition and it, it states the following, the Messenger of Allah, with peace and blessings be upon him, said to Ali, alayhi salam, your position to me is like the position of Harun was to Musa alayhi salam. And for the viewers to go back and please study this very significant part in history, what happened between Harun and Musa. So here the Holy Prophet is giving, uh, he's giving a comparison to himself with Imam alayhi salam, with both Musa and Harun alayhi salam. Then the Prophet says, except that you're not a prophet, and you are my Khalifa, you are my Khalifa, among every believer after me. So here this hadith, the Holy Prophet not only calls Imam al Islam uh, a Mawla, as uh, on the incident of Ghadir, but here he uses the word Khalifa. Okay, here comes another tradition. So the next tradition is from Al Haythami, uh, and this is from the same companion Ab Abu Tufal. And with Abu Tufal, he's, he's an extremely interesting personality. Um, we're going to have to do a, a separate show just on him. He was from the last companions of the Holy Prophet. So this is from Al Haythami, and he narrates a, a sermon uh, from Imam Hassan alayhi salam, the son of Imam Ali, and this took place just after. Uh, Muhammad al Islam's death. So this is quite a touching sermon. I, I'm going to leave it there for the viewers to go back and read the whole sermon from start to end. Extremely beautiful sermon. But here again, we see a companion of the Holy Prophet. So we're not just, we don't just have hadith from the Holy Prophet where he's used the word wali and mawla, but we even have 
a companion of the Holy Prophet, and his, the son of the companion of the Holy Prophet, who is using the term Osiya. And it says, Imam Hassan al-Islam gave his sermon, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he mentioned the command of the faithful Ali al-Islam, the seal of the Osiya, the successor of the prophets, the most honest and the, tr the, the most truthful uh, and a martyr. So this hadith has been graded as Hassan, as you can see in the footnote, and this is from um, the book uh, Majmal al-Zawaid, volume 18, page number 346, 347, at least number 14,700, and, so let me just make sure that's right, at least 14,798. So now, Brother Abul Hassan, um, we presented uh, the, this, what the Sunni scholars have said in terms of uh, the concept of Wali itself. We've touched on the different meanings of the word Wali and Mola. We showed how the term uh, Wali and Mola has been used in the Hadith of the Holy Prophet um, uh, uh, when it came to addressing Muhammad al-Islam. We've also presented um, a Sahaba um, and a son of the Sahaba, who was also a Sahaba and Ahlul Bayt, who used the term Osiya to describe Imam Ali al-Islam as being a successor of the Holy Prophet. Um, and last but not least, I think I'm going to pass it on to uh, Abdul Hassan, who can finish this up. Thank you, Sayyid Ali. Uh, that's really funny that you mentioned the term Wisaya or Wasi because uh, Muhammad ibn Ali al Shawkani, who's a very common and known Salafi scholar, he makes a book called Proving the Wasiya of Amir al Mu'mineen. It's called Al Aqd al Thameen fi Ifbat Wisayati Amir al Mu'mineen. So it's actually a whole book he dedicates to proving the wasiya of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam. At the end of the book, he says, after mentioning all the narrations which prove the wasiya of Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, therefore, we must believe that Imam Ali is the successor, and in the Arabic, he uses the term wasi, of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, the Muslim must believe this according to the narrations. So if we scroll down, so as we can see here, a, a Salafi scholar actually accepting wasiya. Look what he says on the next page. So if you can just move a bit up, yeah. So he says, know that many of the haters of the Shia oppose their opinion by saying their opinion, Imam Ali alayhi salam is the successor of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a myth. He then goes on to say, this is stubbornness and ignorance far from being neutral as how can the situation be so, i.e. a myth, since many of the companions said so too, as narrated in the two Sahih, that some companions mentioned to Aisha that Ali was the successor. And this is in the same book, Al-Aqd al-Thameen fi Ithbat Wasayati Amir al-Mu'mineen, page 45. If you want, I can read the Arabic real quick. He says, اعلم أن جماعة من مبغضين للشيع عدو قولهم إن عليا عليه السلام وصي لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من خرافاتهم وهذا إفراط وتعنت يأباه الإنصاف وكيف يكون الأمر كذلك وقد قال بذلك جماعة من الصحابة كما ثبت في الصحيحين أن جماعة ذكروا عند عائشة أن عليا وصي وكما في غيرها So here he says that Ali عليه السلام was actually the wasi and some of the companions had this opinion too as, as well so i'll read one more narration as well in majma al zawaid by al haythami he says narrated by ammar ibn yasir sorry, sorry uh, bro one second brother so hang on you say the companions attested to this as well so i thought yes. Abu Nisba was the first person who propagated belief that ali was the wasi of the prophet no it's actually mentioned in the two <laughs> sahih bukhari and muslim <laughs> that some people came to aisha and said um, like they were clarifying from her, did the Prophet actually give wasiyah to Ali or no? Yeah. But you see, so, these are the same, our, our opponents are the ones that say that this is all concocted by Abdullah ibn Sabah. But here we go. Okay, bro, over yeah, to you. Some... Exactly. And as Shokani say, no, this is the companions that are coming and asking. Subhanallah. Al-Haythami says, narrated by Ammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
from the Holy Prophet وسلم, he says, I do wasiyah to those who believe in me and believe in the wilayah of Ali alayhi salam. And look here, the word specifically mentions wilayah of Ali. Who accepted him as a wali. I am his wali. Who accept me as wali. Allah is his wali. Whoever loves Ali alayhi salam, he loves me. And whoever loves me, he loves Allah azza wa jal. And whoever has a grudge against or for Ali alayhi salam, he has a grudge for me. And whoever has a grudge for me, he has a grudge against Allah. He goes on to say that this is narrated in the Tabarani with two chains. He says, I believe there are some narrators who are weak. However, some others have authenticated them. In Mijma' al-Zawa'id, volume 9, page 95. SubhanAllah. That, that really... I think and this, this narration actually specifically maybe. mentions Wilayah of Ali. So he's making a mockery. Hang on a second. This is actually mentioned in some hadith. He can, we can, fine. But as al uh, Haythami said, there's an opinion that authenticates him. Unless, unless you want to exclude Imam Ali Islam from outside the, the definition of Walaya, as we have yeah. established from the start of the show. So yes. Either you do not accept Imam Ali Islam from bringing the, the, uh, having this uh, uh, Walaya, be it in the aspect of um, having mastership over you, a, a form of um, authority over you, uh, you can try to deny this fact as much as you want, but in reality, by you denying this, you in fact, um, uh, by definition, would not even be considered to be a, a Muslim. Thank you very much. I think so. That is, that's a, I think it's a good point, really, to c conclude this part. But if I could say one thing, it is Brother Haji who was mocking Vilaya, Vilaya, and his friend was laughing throughout. That's his common theme, my friend. Wilayat is a concept which is established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Rasul. It's been reiterated by the companions, affirmed by them. It's been confirmed by Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wa salam. The ulama of al sunnah have recorded it in hadith and they've attested to its authenticity. So if you're said going Bukhari, to... And the Salafi Shawkani <laughs> accepted and he said we must believe this because there of the narrations. Are. There we are. So if you want to um, mock the doctrine of Ilaya and almost suggest it's something alien to Islam, uh, you need to reevaluate re -evaluate your belief system, brother, and uh, stop uh, pulling the wool over people's eyes because this form of mockery isn't good. It doesn't help you. And in truth, you end up um, uh, with the uh, egg on your face. And, you know, we, we don't want you to essentially um, humiliate yourself in such a manner. So uh, we would urge you to desist from such conduct. As you haven't, and you've decided to do a whole series on Vilaya, um, this was the first part. Inshallah, we shall continue this series.